Good evening and welcome to the first part of a short series on parsing using Haskell. Uh, parsing is a part of computer programming that is often shied away from. It's seen as complicated or difficult because of the traditional methods in which parsers have been built in programming languages like C. But uh, I'm going to show you how in Haskell it's really easy and good fun. Uh, I have uh, put links in the description below to most of the things that I talk about today and we're going to be building up through this series a git repository of the source code so I will also put a link to that so that you guys can go along and have a look at uh, the actual code that we build during the series. Uh, first of all I'd like to just sort of talk about the fact that there are two different kinds of parsing uh, at least as far as uh, the general just of things in Haskell goes. Uh, we have the traditional lexical analysis followed by uh, um, a parse phase which is fulfilled in Haskell by a pair of programs called Alex and Happy and I will put links to those in the description. Um, and we have a mechanism called parser combinators which is provided by two main libraries one called Parsec and one called Atto Parsec. They do essentially the same thing. Parsec is a more general solution. Atto Parsec is designed for dealing very efficiently with networking and uh, sort of binary protocols and binary data files. So we're going to be using Parsec in this uh, project. And uh, the first thing that we need to do is get ourselves a project so let's get ourselves a calculator because that's what we're going to build. One calculator project, I will be pushing this up a little bit later. Now I'm about to just go ahead and put a sort of skeleton in place and there we have it, a very basic skeleton for our calculator. I'll just walk you through what I've got here. Um, obviously the first two lines, the imports bring in Parsec, the library that we're working with, and um, specifically the Parsec functionality that operates on strings. So the stuff that we can get and write and put to uh, standard in and standard out. Uh, down at the bottom here, we have a main function that uses a fantastic handy dandy uh, library function called interact. Um, and interact takes a function that reads a string and returns a string and basically lifts it up into IO, connects it to standard in and standard out and so turns the function that you give interact into a Unix pipe essentially. And we're feeding it uh, a simple function uh, composition of unlines which takes a string, a list of strings and returns a string. You can see that down in the status bar at the bottom of the, of the screen. Uh, lines which takes a string and gives us back a list of strings those do the obvious as you'd expect of splitting um, the input up into lines and taking our output that we generate and putting it back together um, so basically taking new lines in and out of what we're dealing with and then map calculate which is going to uh, take our calculate function which is just above and it's going to map that over the list of strings that's returned by lines so it's going to give calculate each line of input in turn and the output that calculate produces will be passed to unlines which will then put it back together and interact will then send all of that to standard out. Calculate is a function from string to string that is actually going to do our parsing. Uh, you can see here that we call a function called parse which is in parsec Again, the link to Parsec's documentation will be in the description below. I strongly suggest that you go and look at it and read about it. It's going to call calculation, which is another function above. Uh, the empty string here is just the name of the uh, string that, uh, that we're parsing. That could be a file name if you were parsing from a file. And S is the input that came to calculate here. What comes back from parse is an either parse error or type of answer that your parser produces, which for calculation would be an int. So 
the error comes out in the left and we construct an error message and the answer comes out on the right we construct an answer. Calculation is a function that we're saying is a parser that returns an int and at the moment it doesn't do anything it's undefined. If we go ahead and try to run that which we can just use run ghc on our calculator then it looks like nothing's happening but it is running and if I type a number in we get the undefined because we didn't know how to parse it. So what we can do now is go back to our source code here and we can start to fill in the calculation function with something that's going to do some parsing. Let's uh, first of all parsing is monadic so we can use do which will make our lives easier in the future and we'll start by just trying to parse a a number. Let's try to read an integer in. So let's have let's write a function called parse number and parse number will be again a parser that returns an int. Okay. Parsec provides for us a convenient uh, function called one of. Um, I'll just show you how that operates. So one of takes a list of characters and returns this complicated looking thing which is effectively a parser that returns the character that it uh, managed to parse and it also provides for us a really handy function called many one and many one takes a parser and it returns to us another parser where the result is a list of the input parser's return type and what that in addition does is the one on the end means that we're going to get at least one of the results of parsing. So we can combine those two together to give us a parser to parse numbers and we can do that by parsing for uh, many one, one of zero to nine. Now that's obviously going to give us a character string so we're going to put that into something let's put it into n tick and we need to return read of n tick in this instance we don't need to tell read any more because by type inference it can work out that it needs to produce an int from reading that string so let's have a go with that run ghc and if we say 45 we get back 45 and if we say Jeff then we get back this error that says that the J was unexpected. This is exactly what we were hoping for so let's move on a little bit. What about if we want a minus on the front? Well Parsec provides for us a function called try so let's have a go at applying try to getting an optional minus on the front of our program. So let's say we're going to get neg from try car minus. It's a simple answer and we need to do something with that so let's construct that on the front of our number. Seems likely car is a parsec parser function that takes a character and returns a parser that will parse that character or fail and try of course is going to try to cons consume that minus and uh, if it can't it's going to give up minus 12 minus 12 12 error unexpected one it was expecting a minus and here we actually find out that uh, try wasn't what we wanted at all because actually char is going to consume one character or it's not going to consume anything at all and what we really wanted was to produce either a minus or nothing if there was no minus on the front of our number. So let's try and do that now. Uh, we're going to use the monadic bind that doesn't care about the value on the left to give us our minus as a list and then we're going to use another bit of parsec 
this funky operator here, which means try to do, do the thing on my left, and if that fails, do the thing on my right, which lets us combine alt parsers together in what's called alternation. So it will try to do each one in turn. Uh, so let's uh, just have a parser that it doesn't do anything other than return an empty list. Now we have an error here, and that's because neg is now a string rather than a character. So this time we're going to parse a minus, and if we get it, return a minus as a string. And if that fails, we're going to return an empty string. And then we're going to parse at least one of digits, and then we're going to concatenate our potential negation to our digits and read that, which is going to give us back an int. Let's give that one a go. Positive numbers now work, and negative numbers work. So we now have something that can parse a number and give us back a successful answer. So the next thing that we want to do is actually try to do some calculations. So let's have a look at adding two numbers together. OK, so we're going to try to get some addition going. So let's do this fairly naively to begin with. Let's get a number, uh, parse a plus, get another number, and just return those two numbers added together. This is not obviously what we'd want in reality, but let's have a go and see if that even works. Can we still parse one number on its own? No, because we're expecting to perform an addition. But if we do that, we do get our answer. So let's first of all try to make sure that we can parse a number or we can parse an addition. Using the alternation operator that we saw before, let's extend this and say that um, our calculation function, I'm just going to leave on its own there for a moment, and I'm going to say that this is a parse addition. And let's move calculation down below parse addition and say that a calculation is a parse number or a parse addition. Let's give that a go. We only parse the 5, and this is a problem. And the reason that this is a problem is that the parse number succeeded, and so parse addition got nowhere. So let's turn those the other way round. Let's parse an addition, or just parse an ordinary number. So if we don't get the plus, we should get our number. Give that a go. 5, error expecting a plus. So the problem that we have here is that the addition failed because it tried to find that plus and it couldn't do anything. And then we've run out of input, so there's no way that we can parse the number. So we're going to wrap parse addition in try. And if we give that a go, 5 gives us 5, and 12 plus 6 gives us 18. So we can now parse additions or just plain numbers. So that's all that we're going to do tonight. Uh, you can see how we might extend this to add subtraction and multiplication and division, but it's going to start getting very long-winded. So tomorrow I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, Parsec magic uh, for making more complicated parsers easier to write. Also, I'm going to show you why the following doesn't work. See you next time. Bye-bye.